Hello and welcome to another video of Rules Lab. This time we're going to discuss some of the most powerful wizards of all. Um, update version. Now, 10th spot in my opinion is Barty Crouch Jr. Barty Crouch Jr. actually defeated Tom. of the most powerful auras ever that itself is an impressive feat he was able to make poor use potion although yes in that sense harry ron and hermione made it in their second year so like it's not really an impressive feat but still Generation potion <clears throat> with Peter Pettigrew. So he's, I think he's good at potions, which is the reason why he was able to make Polyjuice potion and the regeneration potion. And speaking of potions, no, not, just kidding. Speaking of not really. Potions? Or is it potions? Okay, maybe middle. Potions? Mad Eye Moody. Mad, you might be like, wait, what? If Body Crouch was the guy to defeat Mad Eye, then shouldn't Body Crouch be on that lit, the ninth spot? And uh, Mad Eye on the ninth, tenth spot? Well, I don't think so because. Have you ever seen Ron's description of who he was? Captured one half of all the prisoners in Azkaban. <laughs> and uh, the toughest order in the Battle of the Seven Potters. So, like, yeah, I think Mad Eye Moody is a smidge more powerful than, <clears throat> well, Barty Crouch Jr. Eighth spot is Bellistrix Black. Or is it Bellistrix Lestrange? Anyways, Bellistrix Lestrange was the one to torture Frank and Alice Longbottom to extremely powerful auras. <clears throat> was the one to kill Sirius Black, torture Hermione Granger, kill Dobby, and uh, probably more than that. So, like... Uh, is this a li list of how many people you've tortured or whatever? No, but... Anyway, she was able to torture many powerful witches and wizards. So, like, yeah, I think she deserves it. Well, deserves the spot. <laughs> deserves. Sixth spot is... <clears throat> okay, you might be surprised. But this is uh, Hermione Granger. Wait. I actually just kidding. Molly Weasley. See, Molly Weasley was never known to be a powerful witch until Deathly Hallows, where she actually bested Bellastrix Lestrange. Whoa! I mean, do you? Is? I mean, yeah, I just told you that Bella is extremely powerful, but like defeating her one versus one that's uh, and that's really the only impressive feat, but still, fifth spot is Snivellus Snape. Snivellus Snape is undoubtedly extremely powerful and <clears throat> after i fought against minerva mcgonagall another very very powerful witch well non-muggle <clears throat> there was a talented potion near extreme extremely knowledgeable in curses and how to defend against them non-verbal and wandless spells and more which means that 
he deserves this spot. Fourth spot is, uh, if you don't know, this is a combination of five wizards because, well, I can't really with they're pretty much the same. Minerva McGonagall and the Marauders. All of them became Animaguses, but if I had to choose the weakest, it would be Peter Pettigrew. Second is <clears throat> Minerva McGonagall. You might be like, what? Fourth spot of these? Well, one reason is just because of the fact that she, t she took much longer to become an Animagus than the Marauders. With the help of Dumbledore. Dumbledore, like, I'm talking Albus Dumbledore here. Like, Albus Dumbledore? No way. Third spot is Remus Lupin. Remus Lupin is, as you know, the most, the best defense against the Dark Horse. Although you might be saying Mad-Eye slash Barty. Uh, although, yes, the competition wasn't really fierce, he was still an excellent defense against the Dark Arts teacher, and he was extremely powerful in terms of dueling, and was an excellent charms master. Oh, and just so you know, another person on this list, Kelly is Whitwick, he's also going to be fourth spot because apparently everyone could be in there. And Phileas Flitwick is the real third last, and Remus Lupin is just right above him. Anyways, Remus Lupin is pretty much a master in everything. Just like everyone in the fourth spot. Uh, so, like, yeah, that is it. That isn't really impressive. But anyways, third spot is, as you know, the Lord Grindelwald, but I'd also like to add one more wizard. Aberforth Dumbledore. Yes, it's it's him, Dumbledore's brother, and Dumbledore's sister. Man, why are there so many people in each sign? And if Ari actually yeah, I'd like to put Ariana in first spot. Wait. Whoa, another rule of seven here. Where? In the fourth spot. There are seven wizards. Whoa. Anyways. On third spot, Grindelwald is, as you know, extremely powerful, but, um, I mean, do I really have to say how powerful he is? And Aberforth Dumbledore, yeah. Just the fact that he, he's he can control a Patronus is impressive enough. Oh, and just so you know, Harry isn't on the list, nor is Scabio. Nor is Fenrir Greyback. Nor is... Oh, yeah. And Newt's Commander is also in the fourth spot. Uh, how many people are in the fourth spot? Eight? Yeah, that's impressive. Anyways. Second spot is Voldemort. Yeah. Again, do I really have to say his power? Like... Really? Do I really have to? Uh, yeah. Oh, and if I really have to say he killed Mad Eye Moody, killed. And really was just able to defeat any wizard. Really dueled Albus Dumbledore. And oh, just so you know, Newt's. I mean. There's one person I did not add, and that person is <clears throat> uh, who is it again? Ah, yes, Antonin Dorlohoff, and he would be on fifth spot with mo with other powerful wizards and witches. But I don't know which one is it. Killed countless muggles. It's just because they are muggles. But still, that's impressive. And number one, Albus Dumbledore. Do I really have to say this guy? 
power? I mean, really. He's just, just saying one word, he's the greatest wizard of all time. Okay, one sentence. Anyways, that's it for this video. Enjoy it. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe, and bye!